وقل رب زدني علما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أهلا وسهلا ومرحبا حياكم الله بياكم وباكم all of you um, to our eighth lesson in this blessed course the Quran reading course and today inshallah ta'ala we're going to conclude Arabic vowels today we're going to conclude inshallah Arabic vowels so to quickly recap so far we've done the short vowels and we've done the long vowels okay so there's one more thing left um, and we also exp- explained last lesson how Arabic long vowels are in reality alien to the English language or long vowels, the concept of long vowels, something alien to the English language. And to be perfectly honest with you, so far, whenever we've done explanation of certain concepts and we practice them in the workshop, um, generally speaking, the students have been doing doing very well in the workshops. So I was always confident uh, the following lesson to go on to the next topic and to continue moving forward. But unfortunately, that's not the case this time. And that was expected. That was expected. Uh, Because I've said many times before that the med or the Arabic long vowels are the most challenging concept and the most difficult thing to not just wrap your heads around, but also to um, implement properly within this whole course. From beginning to end, um, the med, I believe, is the most difficult concept specifically for English speakers. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I was proven right once again during the workshops. As in, people... We're doing really well before that, but there was some struggling happening, happening a lot of struggling um, on the brother's side and from the feedback I've got as well on the sister's side when it comes to the med. So for that reason, today we are going to explain the last part of med and today's lesson about meddulin or the last two vowels of the Arabic language is very easy, very, very easy. Uh, so I'm not going to spend much time on explaining it. I'll show some examples, and then, inshallah, the rest of the lesson, we're going to practice, practice, practice. And inshallah, tomorrow, we'll try to arrange some workshops as well, especially especially for those of you that felt like they struggled on Saturday and they need a bit more help. So those of you that did well on Saturday and you found it easy, there's no need for you to attend tomorrow's workshop. Um. Specifically for the sisters So I spoke to the teachers And they are inshallah ready to Conduct a workshop tomorrow For those of you that can make it Roughly the same time as today's lesson And if I can do it as well with the brothers Then I'll do that as well inshallah ta'ala طيب. Going on to today's concept Hope my uh, connection is reliable and good so far Okay. All right. So here we go. Meddullin, also known as diphthongs in the English language. Probably something that most of you never heard of. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, to give you an explanation before I show you what I mean, uh, diphthongs are basically when we mix two vowels. That's when you get a diphthong. So you have the normal vowels. That any language has Arabic only has three short vowels a, e, u. English has five and um, but when you start mixing these vowels that's when you get diphthongs okay that's when you get what diphthongs so a diphthong is basically a mixture of two vowels or when you get bring two vowels together okay but how does that manifest itself um, how does that manifest itself 
within the Arabic language. Then let me show you an example, inshallah. One second. There you go. Okay, here we go. So here we have an example of what we're talking about. Now let's start with what we know first, right? We know this, okay? This is a lamb with a fatha followed by an alif, la. We know that. So lamb, fatha, la, but then also with the alif, which makes it long. La. That's what we've done last lesson. Same thing here. We have what? We have a ha followed by an alif. So what do we get? Ha. What do we get? Ha. All right. So that's what we've learned. Okay. Today's lesson is about this part over here. Okay. What do we have here? Here we have a lamb with fatha followed by a Wow. Here we have a ha with a fatha followed by a a ya. Okay. Now, how do you pronounce this? Okay. Um, for those of you that have never come across this, I would love you to guess. Okay. So, those of you that have never seen this before, um, I just want you to guess, right? I'm going to show you here on the screen what I mean. This part that is in red. How, how do you think that should be pronounced? This part that's in red. Okay? That part that is in red. How would you pronounce that? I've got some answers here. Okay. Okay, one person said, le, very short. One person said, uh, low, yes, low. Some wrote it with the O and W, low, and some wrote it with the A W, but I think it's pronounced the same, low. Okay, okay, Umtaz, Umtaz. Okay, yes. So that that would be correct. So this is basically Fatha with the wow. We got low, low. So our uh, I think is sixth. We had three and three. Yeah, our seventh vowel. Our seventh vowel is O. O. So we had a, e, u, a, e, u, o, as in here, low, o. Okay. And then we have this one. All right. So how do you think this one is pronounced then? Okay. Hi, some of you write, wrote hi or here. Actually, somebody wrote here as well. Somebody wrote hey, and uh, yeah, somebody wrote hey as well with a with a J. I assume that's Dutch spelling. I know that's Dutch spelling. The J in Dutch is is, a, is actually a Y in English. Um, okay, one person wrote ha you ha you. Okay, now the somebody wrote he as well, he. Okay, so the correct answer would be hey, hey. Okay, so the final vowel that we're going to learn in the Arabic language or that's missing is the vowel a, a. So again, to mention all of them, we have a, e, u, a, e, U, O, and A. Okay, that's it. Those are the eight vowels in the Arabic language. It has no other vowel. And I'm pleased to say, yes, that right now, having taught you that one, we have completed Arabic phonemes and Arabic sounds. That's it. There's no new sound you're going to be introduced to in the Arabic language. We're done. Finished. We had the 28 letters and the eight vowels. Khalas. Anything you come across from this point onwards, 
in the Quran is going to be a combination of those 28 plus 8, 36 in total. There is absolutely nothing beyond that. Okay? Apart from maybe things in other qiraat, but that's obviously uh, not, uh, not, not relevant. Okay? So, we have completed Arabic phonemes, i.e. Arabic sounds. Okay? Now, the way these sounds manifest themselves and, you know, some of the symbols, more advanced symbols that are used that stand for some, uh, that stand as a shorthand for certain things. That is what we're going to learn in the coming lessons. All right. But with this, we have concluded Arabic vowels. End of module one, we had concluded Arabic letters, as in consonants. Consonants and vowels together gives us all of the phonemes of a language. We're done. Alhamdulillah. Okay. So to recap, to recap. Um, okay, so somebody asked what about Tanween and Shiddah? Tanween and Shiddah, they are not new sounds. They're just certain symbols that denote something, right? They're certain symbols, they're more like a shorthand. Tanween and Shiddah are just a shorthand. It's just a uh, an easier way of writing something, okay? That's what it is. But they're not new sounds. When it comes to the sounds, the things that you hear, they are those 28 consonants, those eight vowels, actually 27 consonants to be more precise, because Elif is not consonant, and eight vowels. Put them together, those are the sounds in the Arabic language. There's no sound beyond that, okay? Alhamdulillah. Okay, Jamil, that is good to hear. Um, let me show you then. I mean, these are two words, obviously, with... I, sp I chose these two words specifically because they have both. They have the long vowel or the lam or the fatha followed by an alif, which is the normal way. That's how it should be. A fatha is short vowel and followed by an alif gives us a long vowel, right? But that fatha only changes and becomes another vowel if it's not followed by an alif, if it's followed by a wow or a ya, which obviously has sukun. And that's an important point because some of you said here, here. Here, heya or 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 hayu. No, 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 no. This ya over here doesn't have suk it doesn't have dhamma or fatha or kasra. This ha over here has a sukun. Right? So if you come across a ya, sorry, this ya, this ya over here has a sukun. It doesn't have a vowel. It's not vowel itself. It's an unvoweled letter. Same goes for the wa over here. It's an unvoweled letter. So when you have fatha or a letter with fatha followed by an unvoweled unvoweled letter from those three letters alif vowel and ya you're going to have something different so if it's an alif it's going to be a long vowel uh if it's a wow it's going to be a diphthong o if it's a ya it's going to be another diphthong a okay that doesn't apply to the kasra and the dhamma the kasra and dhamma no there's something specific to the fatha so the fatha in essence can make how many sounds for those of you that know A fatha can make how many sounds? Yes, four in total. So we have fatha could be a by itself, right? If it's just followed by another consonant that is not one of the three letters of met, or it could become a if it's followed by an alif, or it could become an o if it's followed by a wow, or it could become an a if it's followed by a ya. Okay, so that's when it comes to fatha, and then we have the kasra. And the, the kasra and the dhamma, they can only be either long or short. That's it. So that's two plus two. So four plus four, it gives us eight. Eight vowels in total. Eight vowels in total. Okay. So again, to repeat, fatha, which could be a, or it could be an a if it's followed by an alif, or it could be an o if it's followed by a wow, or it could be an a if it's followed by a ya, which have sukun, all of them. Or we have the, Dhamma, which could be an U or an U if it's followed by a wow. Or a kasra, which is, could be an E or an E if it's followed by a ya. That gives us eight vowels in total. Three short ones, three long ones, and do two diphthongs. Diphthongs is in a mixture of two vowels. We're kind of like mixing between the A 
and the, and the yi, the kasra, gives us a. Okay? That's why even in English, how would you write this in English? How, how do they write house in English? House, bait. Okay? So this is normally how they write bait. So this is a diphthong over here. Can you see now what I mean with a mixture of two vowels? Okay? So this one kind of like stands for the e. The kasra, and this stands for the fatha. This is like a mixture between fatha and kasra. It gives us A. Okay? But obviously we know that ya is the brother of kasra. Yes, ya. We said that kasra, if you elongate it, it turns into a ya. Dhamma, if you stretch it, it turns into a wow. So they're kind of like the same thing. Yes? Kasra and ya, they're related. Dhamma and wow, they're related. Fatha and alif, they're related. Okay? But now when you mix a fatha with a ya, who's related to the kasra, you end up with a new sound. That's what we call a diphthong. Okay. Uh, same thing goes for the for the this one over here, low. Okay. How how would we write that? Well, um, well, it's it's written like this in English, low, right? But that's basically just because the English spelling system is not that uh uh, not that straightforward, right? Um, so let's find another word. Who can give me a word that has a a or an a and a w and that's pronounced like a o? Can anyone come up with that? I can't. We can't say saw because that's different. No, that would be law. If we if you wrote an 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 l, that would be law. We don't mean law. We mean low. Um, I don't know. It's a difficult one. Lowry? No, that's an O. O, yeah. O, O. No, it's different. O and O is different. O. So I literally want this sound. Thor. No, Thor as well. No, it's close, but we mean O, not O. I know so it sounds a bit uh, challenging. No problem. But if you were when if you wrote it. If I give you the sound, the way it's written in English, low, O, oh, that's the sound. Okay? But in essence, in Arabic, it's actually an A or a A and a W, which stands for the wow. Yes? Just like bait, we wrote A and Ya, and low would be like this. Okay? Um, so, yeah. So, not law, but low. Right? Which uh, is actually... I don't know how I'm going to write it, but let's just say, yeah, that, that but then mm, I'll see if I can find the word, inshallah. I, ho I hope you understand what I mean anyway. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that works as well. I don't think, maybe it doesn't exist. Maybe an A and a W is never pronounced as an O. Maybe it isn't. Um, but uh, if we stick to this one, bait then you can see here how we have a mixture of two vowels that gives us a a new sound a new vowel so a and e together give us a a and o together give us o okay bye all right um now what we're going to do inshallah ta'ala is we're going to practice and like i said uh, today we're going to do a lot of practice, inshallah. And the way we're going to practice, inshallah, is by way of writing the words. So I'm going to pronounce the word and you're going to write it, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, that way everybody can be involved, inshallah ta'ala, the brothers and the sisters. And then inshallah tomorrow in the workshop, everybody can read. Okay, so if you can write it properly and correctly today, then inshallah that's a long, a long way in being able to pronounce it properly tomorrow okay now but before we do that there is something important i gotta tell you which is we i want you to type uh with minimal diacritics minimal diacritics but what's meant by that basically it means two things number one don't write the sukun sign okay because in essence any letter that doesn't have fatha kasra dhamma automatically has what sukun Right? So don't bother writing the sukun sign. That's one thing. Number two, when it comes to a, med, a long vowel, don't write the fatha kasra dhamma. There's no need. It is, 
um, you know, it's, 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 it's not needed. And the reason it's not needed is because that's the default. That if you have a letter followed by alif, then it's going to be stretched as a long vowel. If you have a letter followed by a ya, it's going to be a stretched long vowel. If it is that it's not a long vowel, then you add the vowel to the letter. For example, if it's a diphthong, which is the one that we've done today. Yes, this one over here. Let's go back to the Word document. You see this over here. Now, you would add a fat. First, I said don't write the sukun sign. Number one, no need for that. And don't write the fatha before the med. All right? So there's no need for that one. Why? Because by default, it's long. If it's a diphthong, then you write the fatha. Okay? It's very useful to learn how to write minimal diacritics because it makes typing easier for you, number one. And also is a way for me, uh, the computer can automatically grade your input. But if we keep in mind or we try to cater for all the different variations, then there's no way for me to put in the right answer for you to be automatically graded, okay? Which obviously is going to save a lot of time. So... Obviously, this is not graded, as in uh, there are no, no marks or anything involved. So if you get it right, automatically, alhamdulillah, if not, then I'll show you the right answer and then you can judge for yourself if it's right or wrong. So here, this particular one, if we were to write this with minimal diacritics, how would we do it? Get rid of the sukun sign. We don't write the sukun sign at all. There's no need for that. Okay. And also, the, the fatha before the alif, we wouldn't need to write it. Why? Because that's the default. But the fatha here before the ya, we do write it. Why? Because it's a diphthong. Okay? If you weren't, if you didn't write the fatha here, I wouldn't know if it's he or hey. That's ambiguous now. Right? So we write the fatha. So this fatha is not redundant. It's very important. But the fatha on here is redundant. There's no point. Okay? I hope you understand. All right? Tayyib. If it, if but if it's a letter that is not connecting like a there. No, no, look, any letter. It, it has nothing to do with connection. And the computer connects it automatically for you anyway. This has more to do with the vowels. Right? If a letter does not have a vowel, it has sukun automatically, no doubt. That's it. Okay. Um, so if it has a vowel, then write the vowel, Fatha Kasar or Dhamma, one of those three. If it doesn't have any of those three, then leave it empty. Okay? If it's a long vowel, then do not add the short vowel before it. Those two rules only. It's not that, That's all it comes down to. Okay? That's all it comes down to, inshallah ta'ala. Tayyip. All right. Let's, uh, let's give it a go. To show you, to show you what I mean. All right? Can you see this? Uh, this website, it's a very useful website, website called Tenzil. And uh, here we have, you can, you, you can choose different uh, text uh, options, right? So we have what we, what's called, let me zoom in, we have Uthmani text according to Medina Mus'haf, okay? Which looks like this. Where is it? Yeah, so this is the Uthmani text. This is exactly according to the Medina Mus'haf. This is exactly according to the Medina Mus'haf. Um, but there's also an option called Uthmani Minimal, which is Uthmani text with minimal number of diacritics and, and symbols, okay? Which is what we're talking about now. This is how I want you to write uh, in, the, in the coming practice session, okay? I want you to write in minimal. We said no sukun sign and don't write a short vowel before a, a med. Okay, if it's a med, there's no need to write Fatha Kasra Dhamma because that's the default. So let me show you how it looks like if the Quran was written with minimal diacritics. So here you can see, okay, you see here, low. Here we wrote the Fatha. Why do we write the Fatha here? Because it's a, di it's, it's a, it's a diphthong. If that Fatha wasn't written over here, then we wouldn't know if it's loo or low. We wouldn't know. So that's why the Fatha was written. But if we go here to do nihi do here, the dhamma is not written on the on the dal. Why? Because it's a long vowel by default. It's a long vowel by default. Do 
Okay, I know this is not dough. How do I know it's not dough? Because it doesn't have a fatha. Okay, if it was dough, it was a diphthong, the fatha would have been written as it has been written here. Okay, Sha'a. there's a long vowel. How do I know? Because the default is that it's a long vowel. Okay, but if it were a diphthong, then as you can see here, the fatha would have been written Shay. This is not Sha'a, this is Shay, even though it's followed by Alif Maqsura. I don't say Sha'a, I say Shay. Why? Because of the fatha. That tells me it's a diphthong. Okay, I hope that's clear, inshallah. Okay, so again, don't write the sukun and do not write a fatha kasr al dhamma if it's a, a long vowel. So what the, 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 the practice we're going to do now, I've copied it from here. Okay, I've copied it from here. So it's, it's according to this uh, way of writing it, the, the minimal way of writing it. And that's easier for you to type than if I were to copy what? This one. If I were to copy this one, then, you know, Sometimes the sukun in the Quran, sometimes the sukun sign is written and sometimes it's not. And that's for tidweed reasons. Okay? So you wouldn't know the difference. So that's why we chose to go for the minimal version. Okay? So everybody ready, inshallah? Then we'll start. I mean, yeah, the minimal one, yeah, it's easier to read. Okay? But like I said, the full-blown diacritic version is written like that for other reasons. Uh, such as for Tidweed. It's written for Tidweed. Okay? For Tidweed reasons. All right then. Bismillah. This is going to be quite interesting. I'm going to give you a whole minute, one whole minute to write the word, which should be more than enough. Inshallah ta'ala. Okay? So let's start with the first one. I hope everyone is on WooClap. Is everybody ready to go? Shall we put the first word up? Okay. So, so the first one, the first word is Akbaru. Akbaru. Okay, you got a whole minute. And I'll repeat it many times if you like, no problem. Akbaru. 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 Hopefully, one minute's enough. Okay. I've got eight people managed to write it. Yeah, this is the correct answer. Nobody got it. And I think the main reason nobody got this answer correct is because. Um, most of you just wrote the alif with a fatha on top. La, la, that's a big mistake. Alif does not carry a vowel. Please remember this. Alif, an alif with a vowel on top, fatha or a kasra or a dhamma. La, not possible. Okay, alif is not a consonant. Okay, hamza is the one that carries a vowel. So if you're going to write the alif, make sure you write the alif that has the hamza on top. Might be a bit difficult to find it on the keyboard, so I'll give that to you. It's not a big deal. But I just wanted to point that out. Okay? I just wanted to point that out. But for the rest, يعني, if we look at these answers, then obviously here, what's the mistake over here? The mistake here is that akbaru. He stretched it. Akbaru. Bar. With the alif, I didn't say akbar. I didn't say akbaru. I said akbaru. Look at the difference. Akbaru, akbaru. Akbaru, akbaru. Baru. That's the long one. Okay? And and we, we started with this word because of its importance. Who can tell me why? You can put it in the chat if you like. Okay? Who can tell me the importance of this particular word? This particular word, I wrote it down because it's actually quite important. It's very important. And making a mistake on this word could be very detrimental, as the scholars mentioned. Okay? Who, who can tell me why? Who can tell us why? Huh? Okay. Akbaru, so with double ra. No, no, just one ra. Akbaru, one ra. But it shouldn't be akbaru. It shouldn't be long. Akbaru. It shouldn't be akbaru with a with a with a double one. Let me show you um, one word. What I mean by that. And this again, this is related to what? This is very much related to differentiating between the long and the short vowel. So 
Hamza, Fatha, like we said, like this. And then Ba, Fatha, and then Ra, Dhamma. Okay, so this is the correct version of the word. Okay, this is how it should be written. Okay, Akbaru. Now, one of you wrote an alif over here. Akbaru. That's a big problem. Why is that a big problem? Because now what happened is we stretched the fatha. We made it akbaru. And the reason why this word is so important is that we say it, it is part of takbiratul ihram. You know, when you start your salah, you say Allahu Akbar, don't you? And this statement of yours, Allahu Akbar, is what starts your salah. It's called takbiratul ihram. Right, is the thing that starts your prayer. Okay, now akbar, akbar. What does akbar mean? Akbar means drums. Akbar means what in Arabic? It means drums. So when you say Allahu Akbar, you're saying Allah is drums. Scholars mention that if somebody says this, his salah, he hasn't started his salah. In other words, it's as if he didn't pray. Why? Because he didn't say the thing that starts his prayer. You know, if, if, if before you start your prayer, instead of Allah Akbar, you were to say Subhanallah, your salah wouldn't start. If you were to say La ilaha illallah is takbir to haram, your salah wouldn't start. If you say Allahu Akbaru Kabira, Allahu Akbaru Kabira, your salah wouldn't start because the shara or the legislation has stipulated that you start your salah with Allahu Akbar. You can't change that. So the scholars they've mentioned that there are Two main mistakes that people make that change the meaning of the word akbar, which means the greatest. And for that reason, whoever says that, his salah hasn't started. And both of them have to do with what? With stretching the short vowel. Now imagine that. The, the first one is this one, which we are talking about now, akbaru. Yes, which means drums. And the second one is when you say, when some people say, Allahu akbar. Akbar, they, they stretch this one over here. It's as if they add an alif over here. Okay, so then they don't add the alif here, they add the alif over here. They say Allahu Akbar. Now, what does this mean? Now, the whole sentence turned from a statement to a question. Okay, no, sorry, it wasn't, it wasn't this one, it was not in the Akbar, it's actually in the Allahu. Sorry about that, it's in the Allahu. Okay, so when people say Allahu, some people, what do they do? They stretch the, this alif over here. They say Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, they say. Okay? When you say, when you stretch the, the fatha over here, the one that starts with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the whole thing turns from a statement to a question. Now you are asking, is Allah the greatest? And again, goes without saying, what do the scholars say? They say, your salah hasn't started. In other words, your salah is not accepted. Why? Because your salah hasn't started. Why didn't it start? Because the salah starts with this statement, Allahu Akbar. All right? If you say, Allahu Akbar, you're asking a question. Is Allah the greatest? You're not saying, you're not stating that Allah is the greatest. You're asking now. Okay? So I just want to point that out. The importance of what? Differentiating between short and long vowels. I know it doesn't exist in English, but it does in Arabic. And not does it only exist in Arabic, it actually changes the meaning. And this is a tangible, re real world example with serious consequences. Allah musta'ad. Okay? So hopefully, now you realize the importance of this course in particular. And that is, it, it has wide implications. Okay? Barakallahu feekum. Yeah, if you stretch Allah at the end, then it is stretched. That's not, that's, there's no problem there. Allah, that is stretched already. Allah. So there's normally like a small alif here. Uh, it's written in the Quran to show you that the lam and fatha should be stretched. Okay? If you find the word of uh, the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, um, and again, this is to show you the uh, benefit of, of the uh, fully vowelized version as opposed to the uh, minimal. So this is the minimal, right? Okay. This is the minimal. 
I know one of one of you said that is so much easier, less complicated to read, but it's only useful to you if uh, you have some background knowledge of these words. Okay, someone that is a complete, um, uh, if you like, beginner in Arabic and doesn't know any Arabic, then this wouldn't be enough for him. And that's why the scholars have gone to great lengths to design this Quranic script in the Mus'haf, which has no barriers when it comes to languages. You know, if you learn the script, you can read. You need zero comprehension of Arabic language to be able to read the Quran correctly. You need zero comprehension of Arabic if you want to read from the Mus'haf. But if you're going to read from this script, the minimal one, nah, here you need a bit of comprehension. Here you need a bit of comprehension. You need to know what these words mean. Okay, and I'm going to give an example here with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Um, in the Mus'haf, when, you, when it comes to the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you'll find that there, okay, maybe not this one because it's online, uh, but the real Mus'haf, you'll find a small alif over here. Okay, you know, the Fatha is here already. Okay, uh, maybe the name of Allah is not written, but let's find another example here. For example, Bala, there's a small alif written over here to tell you that you should stretch it. Um, this thing, the med nullifier that we talked about, it's there to tell you that that med shouldn't be used. And some other things that you need uh, if you don't comprehend what it is that you're reading. Okay? Type. Sorry, you spent a bit, uh, long, a bit long on that one word. But inshallah, we'll, uh, we'll continue. I mean, this particular exercise, okay, it's not... A stipulation that you get the uh, spelling correct 100%, right? Um, just the important thing is that you don't make any mistakes that change the meaning. That's the important thing. Because there are many different ways that you can still write the word and it can still be correct. There's different levels of detail, okay? So to go back to the example over here, we explained how akbar is wrong because of the addition of the alif. Um, Akhtar, somebody misheard the ba for ita. Um, Lakbaru, one person heard lam instead of a. And look at this one, akbaru, they stretched the vowel at the end. I didn't say akbaru, I said akbaru, akbaru, short, akbaru. Okay? Bye. But again, most of the mistakes, what do you find? They return back to one of two things stretching a, 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 a short vowel or shortening a long vowel that's one thing to do with the short and long vowels or mishearing the consonant okay you'll find that most of the time all mistakes return back to these two things okay we're going to go on to the next word inshallah hope you're ready shall we continue is everybody ready all right Ba'di 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 Alhamdulillah I got, I got one of the answers came, came through that, that is correct Alright let's uh, Let's look at your answers. So we have okay, alhamdulillah, twenty-four percent got it right. Um, let's look at the results. So the correct one, obviously, is this one, right? That's the correct one. Ba'di. I didn't make it long. I didn't say ba'di. As one of you has written over here with a yati and ba'di. No, I didn't stretch it. Okay. Um, what else? One person here wrote what looks like a small alif. I don't know if the person means that I should say ba'di as, as if I'm stretching it or if that small alif is meant to be a fatha. Allah knows best. One person wrote a dad when in essence I pronounced a dal. Ba'di, not ba'di. Ba'di is a dad. Ba'di is a dal. Bye. Um, this is an answer. Yab'ad. 
Okay, first don't write the sukun. We said do not write the sukun. We said do not write the sukun. All right. One person wrote a ta. Okay. Uh, and and uh, Hamza, I don't know. Uh, one person wrote I. He put the kasra on the ain instead of the fatha on the ba and the kasra on the dal. Okay. No problem. Yani, um, quite a few of you got this one right, alhamdulillah. And there are a few mistakes which I've highlighted. Okay, we're going to go on to the next word, inshallah. Everyone ready for the next word? Okay, we're going to start the next word. Bismillah. Fa'ala. 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 Make sure you write the, you add the vowels. Make sure you add the vowels. Fa'ala. Okay, so time's up. Um, let's share some of the answers. What do we have? First, well, before we get to how many people got it correct, this is one of the correct answers. Okay, fa'ala, that's correct. Um, one person wrote alif, fa'ala. I didn't say fa'ala, I said fa'ala, not fa'ala. Uh, one person wrote, he didn't add the fatha over here. Okay, so this would be, be read as fa'la, fa'la. When I said fa'la, I gave the aini fatha. Okay. One person wrote the ha at the end, fa'la. That would be fa'la. Okay. One person here wrote fa'ala. So he stretched both the ain with the alif and the lam with the alif. Fa'ala. No, it's not fa'ala. Fa'ala. Every single vowel that I've pronounced was short. Fa'ala, not fa'ala. Okay? Ta'yib, mashallah. So far, I'm finding it uh, uh, very useful uh, exercise so far. Type twenty four percent of you got it right. Inshallah, let's go to the next word. You ready for it? Word number four. And this one should be Inshallah very easy. Okay. Min. 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 Okay, Mashallah. I think here for this one, I think almost everybody got it right. Okay. MashaAllah. Bye. Mutaz. Okay. Let's look at the answers. Um, we have Min. This is the correct one. Okay. One person wrote it with a. Some of you just didn't add the harakat. That's one of the main mistakes. Uh, this person, this person wrote men instead of min. So they wrote fatha instead of kasra. Uh, one person wrote in English. Uh, but even this one in English, why the double E? That still means it's a long vowel. We're not reading a long vowel. I said min, not mean. Okay. Tayyip. Uh, one person here wrote the sukun, which we said again, do not write the sukun sign. I repeat, do not write the sukun sign. We're doing the minimal diacritics approach. Type. So how many of you got it right? 53%. Now that doesn't include, obviously, those of you that uh, didn't write the haraka or those of you that wrote the sukun sign, which maybe is correct. But Alhamdulillah, that's a notable improvement. I know it's a bit, it's a, I know it's, it's a bit difficult, but like I said, um, just write it, inshallah. Keep the vowels if you want in your head, and then just benefit from the feedback that I'm giving. Uh, even if you don't get it correct on the system here, it doesn't matter, inshallah. 
it doesn't matter if you're not part of the 53 or 24 percent or whatever it's not graded so the, the reason we're doing this exercise is to for you to have the opportunity to write and for me to see the common mistakes and explain why they are wrong and also for you to benefit from the feedback that you're getting so that if there's something that you've misunderstood then you know my explanation would resolve that okay but inshallah at the workshop that's really when you're going to do what you're meant to do which is actually pronounce it yes none of us here today or none of us signed up for this course to be able to write the quran huh we all signed up for this course in the able to be in able to be in, in able to read the quran so but we're just utilizing this or we're just using we're just doing the writing bit so that we can get everybody involved that's the only reason really okay we're just trying to improvise as much as we can that's the only reason but otherwise it's all about what you read and that's that that becomes apparent in in class or in workshop when you're actually reading to the teacher okay right uh, let's do one more word let's do one more word i think we've gone over time today let's do this one this is the last one inshallah alayhi 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 okay i've got eight answers so far these, these are some of the answers okay i want you to vote on the one that you think is correct all right so which one do you think is correct let's see the votes um okay mashallah as we can see let me share the screen um, so we have one of you thought this is correct. No, this is alayhi. That's a kha. When we pronounce the he at the end, he, which is a ha. That's what we pronounced. Okay. Uh, three of you said this one alayhi, which I assume to be alayhi, but the alif doesn't have, doesn't carry a vowel. So it should be hamza, but it's fine. Alayhi. No, it's not alayhi. We said a, a, ain, alayhi. Uh, five of you thought this is the correct one alayhi, and this is not correct because it is stretched alayhi. I didn't say alayhi. I didn't say alayhi. and then finally we have six of you that said or that agreed with this one alayhi, which is actually the correct answer uh, the a is short the lam and the ya make a diphthong lay and then he which is short. Not this one. This one here. Ala he. They stretch the kasra at the end. So again, a mixture of shortening, long vowels, stretching, uh, short vowels, and um, mishearing some of the sounds, such as the difference between ha and kha, and the difference between ain and a hamza. All right. So don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. All right. You have been hearing these sounds for your whole life. So to be able to recognize completely new sounds, it's not easy, but it's very much doable. It's doable. Okay. So don't lose hope. In the great scheme of things, this is only a course that will last for maximum three months and all the time you've put in listening to the different sounds and comparing between them and contrasting if you put all of it together it's only a couple of hours so this is the sort of thing that you, it starts with awareness in this kind of course but it's something that in the coming months or even years you start to listen out to okay so you listen out and you try and uh, hear the different sounds. Yeah. So when you cons consistently do this for months, sometimes even years, then eventually you will notice the difference and your brain will eventually register the difference between a long sound and a, sh and a, and a short sound or a long or short vowel and the difference between ain and hamza and ha and, and, and kha and ha. All these things, it will come, inshallah, it will come. Just practice. Practice makes makes perfect all right how do i know which ha to put at the 
end. Um, it should be, um, it should be something that uh, when you hear it, you should hear the difference. If that's what you mean. So let me let me pronounce the different ones that people normally mix up. So he's, I said alayhi, he. Okay. Some of you heard alayhi, alayhi. So he, he, alayhi, alayhi. Big difference. I mean, at least for me, and inshallah for you too soon. And some of the people, they mix it up with the ha. Alayhi. Alayhi. Again, that sounds different from alayhi. Okay? Um, so, if you recognize the ha, then you'll know to put a ha at the end. Okay? Yeah, so ha is light, correct? Ha. And ha is... is Heavy, it's like when you have a sore throat. Okay. Bye. Uh, yeah, one of one 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 of the students said we definitely need an assignment on this. Listening to audio and writing is helpful. Inshallah. Inshallah, definitely I'll I'll put it on Google Classroom. Uh, I'll record my voice and you can type it. And then it's gonna be one of those practice widgets. Okay, I know some of you say, Ustad, we can't submit. It's not for submitting. It's just for you to practice. And then when you're done, at the end, it's going to show you the correct answers. Or I can even put it in a way that you get the, you get the feedback or the answers straight away. So you listen to the sound, you type it. Before you go to the next question, it's going to give you immediate feedback. And you're going to see how it should be written. And again, remember, write minimal diacritics. Okay? Because that's the only way. Or that's... That's what I'm going to put as a correct answer. Because I can't accommodate for all the different ways that people might write it. Some might write the vowels, some might not. Some might write the vowels at certain times, sometimes not. So it's to be to have a, a uh, if you like, um, one system, then we're going to go with the minimal diagritic system, which is write all of the vowels apart from two situations, which is don't write any sukun signs and do not write any vowels or don't add any vowels to a med. Okay? Those two rules. Inshallah. Alright? Barakallahu feekum. I think we'll conclude with that. If you have any questions, any comments, any feedbacks, you can uh, add it, inshallah ta'ala, to WooClap. Um, yeah, even though the competition bit was uh, turned on today, uh, I think it's not going to be that accurate, mainly because um, because of the fact that uh, you know so many different variations of writing things, but for the sake of it, inshallah, these are that's the top three, and this is the top five. So we have uh, some, we have one, uh, two, two people that are sharing the gold medal, and then we have here yeah, we have um, one person with silver and two people that are sharing the bronze or the third place if you like Taib. all right so yeah uh, well done uh, noble and all the other ones that have uh, you know got so many points so again like i said it was really really difficult i have to say this was really really difficult uh so those of you that didn't get any points or whatever i'm sure that you did write it correctly but just the whole vowel thing is just too much variation there so inshallah practice makes perfect anyway so keep an eye out on google classroom inshallah I'll try to uh, release the assignment tomorrow and uh, don't forget to leave any of your comments in google club inshallah all right barakallahu feekum assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, yeah so the question is up on google now any comments feedback you can put it there okay and once again, like I always say, the comments and the feedback are very useful. So keep them coming, inshallah. Barakallahu feekum. Wa jazakumullah khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.